What's up everyone? This is Etelanti. How are you guys doing? Today I'm back with another video where I try to deliver as much value to you as possible in the shortest amount of time. Today we're doing hi-hats. I have four tips for you that are going to step up your hi-hats for sure. Uh, some of them you might have thought about, some of them you might have not thought about, but I'm sure you will get something from this video if you watch it all the way through. Like I said, I don't want to waste any time. Let's get into it. All right, here we go. So let's get right into it. So the first step for today is going to be Treat your hi-hats like melodies. Now, when you think of a melody, you usually have like three different things. You have a main melody, you have a top like counter melody, and then you have more of like the bass line of the melody. And that's kind of how I see hi-hats as well. I have these like three lanes, different levels, different layers of hi-hats almost at all times, or at least at the, like, the, the peak of the beat, you know, like during the drop or whatever. So let's create a four bar loop and I'm gonna try to show you what I mean. So here's my four bar loops. I have a kick strum and snare, really, really simple. And we're gonna build a hi-hat part respecting that thing. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna find the note right in the middle. Maybe like right around here. And I'm gonna just put down all the eight notes. So now that we have this main line kind of going through the whole beat, uh, let's try to put a lower melody underneath it. So some like accents to like create almost like a counter melody. I literally see it as a melody. See, it can be as simple as that. So now I have the chi 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 and underneath it I have doom, doom, cha, chi 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 cha which is a totally different rhythm. I'm gonna get into pitch in just like a second, but I can tell you right now that I think of these just like melodies. So I developed them as like a melodic part. Anyway, so let's double that. And now let's try to create a top line. Now the top line, it could be a little bit busier, uh, but if you leave it like sparse, you can create some like really, really good like bouncy hi-hats. Right, so as you can see right here, I have three parts. I have the main layer, which is just doing eight notes, nothing special. I have one at the top, which is just doing like these little rolls. And then I have the bottom one, which is kind of like almost like a bass line. So when you play them all together, it sounds like this. Pretty cool, right? All right, let's move on to number two. Now, number two is tuning your hi-hats. Uh, now, not a lot of people think of drums in terms of like tuning, uh, but I think it's super important. Like everything has a pitch uh, or most things, but generally they have like a determining pitch. It's not like an A, like an, a hi-hat is not going to be necessarily like an A on a piano, but you're going to hear a lot of like different like harmonics of it and your, your ear is going to catch like the hardest harmonic that's coming at it to put it in like really, really simple and really bad terms. But I hope you know what I'm saying. Find the key to your beat. I don't have a beat right now, but I'm just gonna tell, I'm just gonna tell you. Find the key to your beat, then go into your hats. If you're in Ableton, you can go on your Simpler where you have your hats, go on controls and just do transpose and just bring them up or down of however many semitones you need. Another thing you can do is just open a piano roll like I was doing earlier and just click in the notes on the correct uh, pitches, on the correct notes. So yeah, just make sure that the, the notes that you're putting on your hi-hats, especially since we created them like a little melody, make sure that they match the actual melody of the beat. So the third tip is hi-hat length. Now this might seem like a weird one, but it's actually really important. It's super important for like open hats, but also for closed hats. Like for example, if we take that hat part that we just built earlier, um, I have my controller, let me simpler, I have it on classic, which means that uh, it's like a classic sampler. So if I press a note up here, it's gonna have a certain length. If I push it down here, it's gonna be longer. It's gonna be like stretched out. And if it's up here, it's gonna be even faster. So like the pitch of the note decides the length of the note. Another thing you can do though, is turn on warp and all the notes now are gonna have the same exact length. So whether it's this one or this one, the pitch is gonna change, but the length is gonna be the same. So depending on the beat, there's like no right or wrong, like 100% but experiment with both things depending on the beat uh, and you could get some really cool results. And also like if you nail it, if you get the right one for that beat, for that particular like flow, um, it's gonna cut right through and like I was saying earlier, you're gonna have to do very little mixing. The hi-hat is gonna come like right through the mix. That's the first thing. The second one is length on open hi-hats. Like this one that I already prepared down here um, for my future sample pack. I'm gonna keep shouting out my future sample pack until it comes out. Just build a hype. Like right now, if you go and check it out right here, it starts at the beginning of the bar, like where it's supposed to be, like right on the grid, but it should end right here where it's 1.3, right? At the end of that quarter note. It doesn't. 
it ends earlier. So what that does is that when I'm playing the groove and I turn it on, listen to it. See how like it ends like a little bit before the snare comes in? And I don't want that. I want it to end right on that snare. So usually when we think of drums, we just focus on the attack. Like we quantize the attack and we make sure that the attack is on the grid. But the release should also be on the grid. Because otherwise you get these like awkward, you know, awkward sounding like length. And it just kind of like doesn't work as well. So what I'm going to do is click warp, which is already clicked. I'm going to click warp. And because I'm in Ableton, you can't do that everywhere. But, you know, there's other systems for it. I'm just going to press shift and just drag it all the way to the end. So now it's perfectly in time with everything else. See how much harder it hits when it comes in with that open hand that it's in time? It hits so much harder. Let's move on to the last tip, which is pan your hi-hats. Uh, now, panning is like super important with hi-hats because when they're like right in the, in the center, it's like they just blend in with the kick and they're like kind of fighting like on the same like space point. I, I explained that terribly, but I'm sure you get it. Like in general, with everything that has to do with frequencies, we want like the lower frequencies to be like more towards the center. So like more like mono. And then the higher up we go in frequencies, we want it to be like wider and wider and wider. A super quick thing to do that, at least in Ableton, is you go into your simpler where I have my hi-hat part that we built earlier. I go into controls and there's this thing called random pan. Um, and you just, just kind of pick the percentage. I like to do it between like 30 and 50, depending on, you know, depending on what I'm, what's going on with the beat. I'm going to put it at 41. I want you to listen to the difference. So this is without the panning, just like straight up. Right? It's not bad, but listen to what happens now. I'm going to turn this up to like, let's say 40. Check it out. Did you hear that? It just sounds so much better. Like the kick hits harder, the snare hits harder, the hats just make you feel like you're like in this like bigger space. It's awesome. So yeah, don't forget about panning with hats. All right, that was my last tip for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I kept it as fast as I wanted it to be. I like these to be like, just like bam, 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 fast, fast, fast. I don't want to waste anybody's time. I just want to get to the point and deliver as much value as, you, as I can in the shortest amount of time possible. Man, that was hard to say. Before you leave, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. I post videos, uh, I don't know, man. I'm just posting videos whenever I feel like and I'm trying to post as many as I can. So you might get one a week, you might get four. <laughs> I don't know, it depends. So subscribe so you get a notification when I post a new one and you don't miss out. Also, if you want to hit me up privately, if you want to say hi, if you want to ask me a question, whatever it is, here's my Instagram. It's the social media that I use the most. Just write me a DM and as soon as I can, I will respond to you. All right, I guess this is it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I'll see you next time. And as always, be positive and positive things will happen.